friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. This is another weekly WW meal prep and I am so excited about the recipes this week. They are part of my challenge over on my Facebook group. If you are not part of my Facebook group, we are almost 9,000 members strong. I'm gonna put it right here. Go ahead and head on over to Facebook, join my group. It is such a wonderful, positive place. Tons of ideas and right now we're in the midst of a challenge. If you want to join the challenge, it's not too late. You can join it midway through. So these recipes, breakfast and lunch, are going to be part of the challenge. And then I'm making a fun, delicious chocolate overload dessert that's WW friendly with frosting. How amazing is that? So if you want to see what I have in store for you for meal prep for the week, just stay tuned. For my breakfast this week, I'm going to be making pumpkin cream cheese pancake bake. Oh my goodness, does that sound so good. This is a make ahead recipe, so this is a great solution for meal prep because you are supposed to make this ahead of time. So great recipe to prep for the week. So let me show you what is in our pumpkin cheesecake pancake bake. So first you're going to need some Heart Smart baking mix by Bisquick. You can use regular Bisquick or any other type of baking mix, Kodiak, Birch Benders. Just make sure you recalculate your points. But I'm gonna be doing the Heart Smart Bisquick. You'll also need some all-purpose flour. Milk of your choice or milk alternative. I'm going to be using Carb Master Milk from Kroger. Sucre and Gold, which is an absolutely delicious brown sugar alternative. I purchase my Sucre and Gold off of Nettrition's website. I find it to be the least expensive. There is a link down below. Click the link. It'll take you to Nettrition. You can do some searching around, seeing what's out there. They have hundreds of WW friendly products, but I highly recommend the sucre and gold it's delicious tastes like real brown sugar zero calories and the best part is it's all natural so definitely check it out on Nutrition's website i'm also going to be using just some regular monk fruit sweetener you'll need some canned pumpkin make sure you're buying the 100 percent pumpkin not the pumpkin pie mix that one has sugar and then for my pumpkin pie seasoning i'm going to be doing dax if you follow my channel, you know I love me some Dax. This is an all natural, nothing artificial, you guys, zero. 100% natural, no salt added spices. And these are so good. The ingredients in these are absolutely on point. It is literally all natural. That's it, cinnamon, spices, and honey. That's it. And with that little bit of honey in here, it adds such an amazing flavor. Highly recommend Dax. Highly, highly, highly. I do have a discount code for Dax. I'll put it here on the screen. Click the link below, enter the code, check out their website. Over 20 spices in every single one. Outstanding. I have to say though, pumpkin spice, my all-time favorite. So I'm definitely going to be adding some of that to this pancake bake. And then also I'm going to be using vanilla bean paste instead of vanilla. I like the flavor of this better. It's that real authentic, delicious vanilla flavor. I did pick mine up here at Trader Joe's. You can also use liquid vanilla, whatever you have on hand. We're going to need some fat-free half and half, light butter, eggs, and fat-free or low-fat cream cheese. So let's get started on our breakfast prep. To get started on our pancake bake, we're gonna go ahead and add in our two cups of our Bisquick Heart Smart Baking Mix. And to that, we're gonna go ahead and add in some pumpkin pie. Now it calls for one teaspoon. I love pumpkin pie spice, so I'm gonna add a little bit more than that to mine. And we're just gonna give this a quick stir to make sure we combine together the pumpkin pie seasoning as well as our baking mix. And then we're ready to add in our wet ingredients. So the first thing I have is two thirds of a cup of my Carb Master milk. I'm also going to add two eggs and then we are going to add in all of our pumpkin here. I have about a half of a cup measured out in this bowl. So we're gonna go ahead and add in that. And then the last thing we're gonna add is some of our vanilla bean. So I'm just gonna put in just about a teaspoon or so of the vanilla bean and then give this a good mix. Try not to over mix it. We just wanna mix it until everything is combined together. And then we'll get ready to start cooking down these pancakes. 
We need to make our pancakes. So I have my batter. Doesn't that look delicious? You can see those little beans from the vanilla bean. I went ahead and sprayed my pan with just some nonstick cooking spray. And we are basically going to add about a third of a cup of our batter to our pan. And we're just going to cook down our pancakes. It doesn't matter how many pancakes you end up with because we are going to actually put this into a baking dish and that's what's going to create that layered bake. But go ahead and get your pancakes cooked down, set them aside and we're going to allow them to cool completely and then let's get started on our filling. Before we start our filling, you guys, look at these pancakes. They smell so good. You can smell that pumpkin pie spice from Dax and the vanilla, yum. I just had to show you how amazing these pancakes are looking. So while our pancakes are cooling, we're gonna make the filling for our bake. So first I'm going to add one and a half cups of Carb Master Milk to a bowl. To that, I'm going to add one cup of fat-free half and half. We're going to add about a teaspoon of our vanilla bean paste. You guys, this stuff is pretty awesome. So if you have a Trader Joe's near you, highly recommend. Also, I have one half of a cup of my monk fruit sweetener. And then I had to do my egg separately because apparently this bowl isn't big enough for six. So we want to go ahead and add in six cracked eggs. And then we're just going to take a spoon and you're just going to want to stir this together. Make sure your egg yolks get cracked and that vanilla gets nice and mixed in with your milks. And then we'll be ready to start putting together this pancake bake you guys I don't know about you but this screams fall screams a delicious cold morning breakfast and what's better than pumpkin and cream cheese together so we're going to start assembling our bake so here I have my cool pancakes they look delicious and I also have four ounces of my fat-free cream cheese softened so what we're going to do now the original recipe wants you to slice these in half I'm not going to do that I'm just going to layer my pancakes here in the bottom of my baking dish I think this is a huge time saver and we're gonna go ahead and spread our cream cheese on top versus putting our cream cheese in between our pancake layer so in my opinion just a huge time saver I'm just gonna kind of stack these in here the best that I can oh I had a lot of pancakes oh my gosh you guys seriously these smell so good so I'm just gonna layer my pancakes here in the bottom of my baking dish and then from there I'm going to take my softened four ounces of cream cheese and I'm just going to spread it over the top of my pancakes so just do the best that you can to kind of get cream cheese on all the different parts of your pancakes and then we'll be ready to add on that egg mixture that we made with the milk and that's gonna soak it in Oh, you guys I'm seriously so excited about this these pancakes alone smell delicious so I've spread my cream cheese over the top of my pancakes yum you guys and then to that we're gonna go ahead and just dump over this egg milk and sugar mixture we just want to get it over the top of all of our pancakes not only will it soak into the pancakes uh yummy but it will also bind everything together nicely for the pancake bake and then the last step is we have to create that delicious crumb crumble that goes right on top of this pancake bake the last step is our crumble so what i have here is half of a cup of just regular flour and to that i'm going to add one quarter cup of my packed sucrine gold we're going to add a little more pumpkin pie spice because you can never have enough of that i'm going to give this kind of a quick mix i want to get that brown sugar mixed in with the flour since it was kind of one big clump in my measuring cup so we're just going to get that nice and mixed together and then the last thing we're going to do is add one half of a cup of cold butter so make sure your butter is in your refrigerator while you're preparing the rest of your breakfast because you need that cold butter to make a crumble and we're just going to kind of cut it in here to our flour mixture and then we'll top our pancake bake with this delicious crumble 
So last step, we're just gonna take this crumble mixture and we're just gonna kind of drop it here on top of our pancake bake and it will add that nice kind of crumb buttery coating to the top. And this is going to go into the oven at 350 degrees until all of this egg mixture is nice and cooked through. And you'll know because it's going to have a brown crispy top from the crumble and you won't see any more liquid. So you wanna cook it until that happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this into the oven and then once we pull it out, it's going to stand for about 15 minutes to kind of seal the deal here and then we'll cut it into pieces and get it put together for breakfast. But happy fall. So I just pulled our pancake bake out of the oven. I just wanna give you guys a close up. Look at how amazing this looks it my house smells of all things fall cinnamon nutmeg pumpkin yum so i'm gonna let this set here for about 15 minutes and then i'm going to cut it into eight servings package it up in my meal prep container with the rest of my breakfast and i'll be back to show you exactly what i'm having for breakfast and give you the smart points so before we go through my meal prep i wanted to show you this you guys look at that cream cheese pumpkin deliciousness so that is what the piece of the pumpkin pancake bake looks like. So what I did is I went ahead and cut it into eight servings. So there's three extra servings here in my pan. So I have eight servings here. The serving is huge. It literally fills the large side of my meal prep container and it looks amazing. I tried a little taste, you guys. It is heaven in fall in your mouth so one eighth of the pumpkin cheesecake pancake bake is six smart points and then i'm just simply going to have a two to three little mandarins these are pretty darn small ones uh, this is a small compartment of my meal prep and you can fit three in there so i'm going to have one slice of my pumpkin pancake cheesecake bake three little mandarin oranges so my breakfast you guys six smart points for this decadence so for my lunches this week, I'm gonna be doing a sausage and spinach creamy gorgonzola pasta. Doesn't that sound delicious? And I am going to just pair this simply with some vegetables and some fruit because the pasta itself has some veggies in it and also our protein. So let me show you what is in our pasta. So first you're just gonna need some plain, all-purpose, unbleached flour, milk alternative of your choice. You can do Carb Master, almond milk, Fair Life, whatever you have on hand, also some non-fat plain Greek yogurt, pepper, pasta, the pasta I am using is the Fiber Gourmet Light Elbows. If you guys have not invested in Fiber Gourmet, it's not even an investment because it's not that expensive. This pasta is delicious. You can have two ounces of this pasta for only three smart points, and that is two ounces dry. Always, always measure your pasta dry. Traditional pastas are anywhere from five to six smart points for two ounces. So this is half the points and it is delicious. It is full of fiber and protein, 19 grams of fiber and eight grams of protein. So it definitely keeps you full. We love it. It does not get mushy when you cook it. It seriously is better than regular pasta and half the points. So I buy my fiber gourmet off of net Trition's website. There is a link down below. Just click on the link. It'll take you to the website. There's hundreds of WW friendly products. You can search for specifics like fiber gourmet, but definitely check out their website. You guys they have some great alternatives. They have all of your sugar substitutes, you name it. They have it on there. All WW friendly. So definitely order the fiber gourmet pasta. So today we're going to do the light elbows because we want kind of a smaller pasta for this dish. We'll also need some light butter, some sausage. I'm going to be using the Sam's Choice chicken and apple sausage. I love these. These ingredients are outstanding on this sausage and they are only two smart points for an entire link and again i buy these at walmart and even whole 30 approved that's how great the ingredients are on these so i'm going to be doing one link of sausage per day also you'll need some gorgonzola cheese and lastly some fresh spinach so let's get started on our pasta so the first thing we need to do for our pasta is chop up our sausage. Mine are pre-cooked. If yours are not pre-cooked, make sure that you pre-cook them first. So whenever you're cutting sausages, several of them for a recipe, make sure that you're cutting all of your sausages into the same number of pieces. That way you know how many pieces of sausage to put 
in each meal prep container. Otherwise, there'll be days that you're not eating a full link. There'll be days that you're eating over a full link. So it's just best to make sure that you count all the pieces and cut all of your sausages into that same number of pieces. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So I'm gonna cut each link into 14 rounds and in each meal prep container, I will put 14 rounds. So let's get the sausage cut, it's cut so we can start cooking up our pasta. get our water boiling for our pasta so I'm gonna add my entire bag of my fiber gourmet light elbows to some salted boiling water and then we're gonna create the creamy base for our pasta dish for the creamy base we're going to add one tablespoon of light butter directly to a pan over medium heat I'm gonna allow my butter to melt completely and then we're gonna add in some flour and we're gonna make a roux before we add in the rest of our sauce ingredients once your butter starts to melt down, I have one tablespoon of all-purpose flour. So we're going to add that and we're just going to whisk that together with our butter until the butter and the flour are completely mixed together. After your butter and flour is mixed together, we're going to go ahead and add in our milk and we're going to allow this to warm up a little bit. You want to make sure your butter and your flour are melted down and mix very well with your milk before we add in our yogurt because we don't want any clumps. So your milk's gonna have to come to a warm temperature to really melt down the flour and butter mixture. And then we'll add in our yogurt. Once your milk mixture comes to a boil and you mix it in really good with the flour and butter mixture, I went ahead and added some black pepper and then I also added in my non-fat Greek yogurt. We're gonna keep this at a medium high heat and we're just gonna whisk this until there isn't any more chunks, chunks of yogurt or chunks of the flour and butter mixture. And then the last step is we just simply have to add in our gorgonzola cheese and our sauce is made. Super easy. And we're gonna go ahead and put it all back into the pan we cooked our pasta in and combine up all of our sausage, pasta, and cream sauce. But you guys, looking good. I added my pasta back into the original pan. To that, we're gonna go ahead and add the four cups of spinach. Now the spinach will naturally wilt from the heat of the pasta. So I'm just gonna do half of the spinach at a time and just give it the chance to kind of start to wilt down with that heat from the pasta. I do have my stove on a super low heat as well. And then look at this sauce, it is looking delicious. Last step, my friends, is to add in four tablespoons of our gorgonzola cheese. And we're just gonna stir that in until that kind of melts down with our creamy sauce. Go ahead and remove this from the heat while you're putting together your spinach and your pasta. And then we'll add everything else in our sauce and our sausage. As your spinach begins to wilt with your pasta, we are gonna go ahead and add in our cream sauce. Yum, you guys. And this will definitely help that spinach wilt a little bit faster. So we're just gonna give this a nice big stir, get everything incorporated, allow that spinach to fully wilt down. And then the last step we're gonna do is add in our sausage. And the last step is we're gonna go ahead and add in all of our cut up sausage to our pasta. Now I do have my stove on about medium heat because I do want my spinach to continue to wilt down. And then I do wanna warm my sausage through even though it's already cooked before I divide this out into my meal prep container. So go ahead and add in all of your five links of sausage. And then again, I'm just gonna allow this to warm through a little bit and then we'll get this packaged up into meal prep. This makes five servings and that way we have just enough for all five days. So I'm gonna show you kind of a trick that I do to measure out my food to make sure that I'm getting just the right amount each day. So let me let this warm through and we'll get this into meal prep containers. So here is my completed pasta, yum. So what I did is pulled out my food scale and on my food scale I put my bowl 
and then I zeroed it out and then I added in all of my pasta to my zeroed out empty bowl and my pasta weighs a total of 1,000, oh sorry for the glare guys, I don't know if I can help with my skylight, there we go. Basically 1,577 grams. From there, I went ahead and divided that by five. So that means that each serving of my pasta is 315.8 grams. So what I'm going to do is just remove 315 grams or so out of my bowl here from my food scale into five separate containers. So that's just an easy, quick way to figure out exactly how many grams or the amount that you should be having per serving of a dish. So here are my lunches for the week. We don't have a lot of color going on, but we have a lot of flavor, you guys. This pasta is absolutely amazing. It is so rich and creamy and cheesy. I'm literally obsessed with it. I can't wait. I'm gonna have to make it for dinner for my husband because he loves those chicken apple sausages and he loves like gorgonzola, blue cheese, Yum. So let me show you what I'm having. So believe it or not, this is 318 grams weighed out of the pasta. That is so much. The large size or side of my meal prep container is heaping full with pasta. One link per day. So the gorgonzola pasta with the sausage is only six smart points. This entire serving of pasta six points and then i'm just having a few of the trader joe's frozen brussels sprouts i just spray those with a little spray butter salt and pepper for zero and then i am going to pack a white peach just to have kind of a fruit with my lunch and then for dessert i've really actually been liking these so if you guys make it over to a target they have all their fun little halloween sized treats on sale so i picked up these annie's halloween bunny grams these are just honey and chocolate so they're orange and brown delicious absolutely positively delicious and they are only two smart points for this little package and honestly there's quite a few in here it just cures that crunchy sweet after a meal so i'm gonna have one of my annie's halloween bunny grams so my entire lunch including dessert eight smart points you can't beat it you guys this entire lunch eight points for a sweet treat this week i'm so excited i'm gonna be making triple threat triple chocolate frosted cupcakes i can't wait you guys to share this recipe with you i kind of came up on it with this on my own it sounds amazing i was craving some chocolate and i wanted something point friendly that would allow me to stay on track but still enjoy something i've been really wanting so let me show you what's in our triple chocolate cupcakes first you're going to need some pillsbury sugar-free cake mix this is just the devil's food also some applesauce the chocolate chips that I'm going to be using are these Bake Believe dark chocolate chips. These are from Walmart. So Lily's in my area is not sold at Walmart, unfortunately. So the only place I can buy Lily's is the health food store. And it's anywhere from 6 to $7 per bag. These are less than $4 at Walmart. They have dark chocolate, semi-sweet, and white chocolate. So I picked these up. I'm going to be using the heck out of these for the holidays. So I'm going to start this first recipe using the dark chocolate chips, and then you're going to need some water and we're going to be using the Pillsbury sugar-free chocolate fudge frosting, and of course some eggs. So let's get started on these cupcakes. So let's get started on our cupcakes. So the first thing I did is I took my box of sugar-free cake mix and added it here to my bowl. We are going to prepare it Per the package instructions so we're going to add one and a quarter cup of water and again this is per what the package says we are substituting one half of a cup of applesauce for the one half of a cup of oil and that's a great substitution you can also do non-fat Greek yogurt which is also another great substitution and then three eggs which is what the recipe called for on the back of the box so let's go ahead and give this a nice big mix we want to make sure we get everything combined we also don't want to over mix so i'm very gently just going to kind of stir in the dry part of the cake mix a little bit with the liquid and you don't need it completely combined just starting to combine so that looks pretty good and then here you can see the size of these chips are much larger than uh, lily's and this is four and a half tablespoons of the chocolate chips I weighed that out on my food scale and that gave us about 14 smart points worth of the chips. So we're just going to mix those nicely here into our batter. 
And again, don't over mix because that has your cupcakes sink and they can also become really spongy. So we just want to mix enough that everything is nice and combined. And then we'll grab our scooper and we'll get these into our cupcake tin. So I went ahead and sprayed my muffin tin with some nonstick cooking spray grabbed out my large scoop. I purchased these scoops off of Amazon. You get all three sizes for about $10. They are linked down in my Amazon store. I also have my delicious cupcake batter. So I want to get 12 cupcakes out of this mix. So I'm going to take my large scoop and I'm going to get a level scoop and put it here into my cupcake pan and we're going to do that until we have all 12 cupcakes. Now there is a good possibility that this mix will make more than 12 cupcakes. We will just have to see as we load our batter. And if that's the case, then it would just lower the points a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and fill all 12 of these. I'll be back to show you exactly how many cupcakes I got out of the mix and we'll get these ready to go into the oven. And then my friends, the best part comes and that is the frosting. So I got 12 nice big full muffins out of my batter and as you can see here I do have quite a bit left so I am going to also fill up my mini muffin tin and you'll be able to have three mini muffins for the smart points of one full size muffin so I'm going to use the rest of this batter get this filled up and we're ready to put everything into the oven. And here are our mini little cupcakes. I did add a couple chocolate chips on top. I noticed there wasn't a lot of chips left in the batter. Won't add any smart points or anything to these, but you guys, how freaking cute. So these are gonna go in the oven right alongside their counterpart. And I'll be back to show you our completed triple chocolate cupcakes. And we'll get these guys frosted. Cannot wait. All right, our cupcakes are out of the oven. Look at these. These look so good. So these are our full-size cupcakes. And then over here, we have our little mini cupcakes. So what we're going to do is let these cool for just a little bit. And then we're going to add some sugar-free frosting. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about this frosting and how you can change up the amount to change up the smart points. So let's let our cupcakes cool for just a few more minutes and we'll get ready to frost them. So my cupcakes are nice and cooled. And again, I'm using the Pillsbury chocolate fudge sugar-free frosting. They also make a vanilla that is really, really good. So just shy of a tablespoon of the frosting. So this is not quite a tablespoon, which is honestly plenty for a cupcake. Just shy of that is only one smart point. So basically what I'm going to do is put that on to my cupcake. And really, we're just going to spread it around. And you'll be surprised. It is more frosting than you may think on your cupcake. And it is only one smart point. So look at that. Look at that delicious cupcake full of chocolatey, fudgy frosting. So yum. So I'm going to get everything frosted. The large cupcakes with just shy of a tablespoon of frosting. And the small cupcakes, I'm literally going to put just a tiny little dab it'll be zero points it'll literally be less than a third of a tablespoon just to give that little bit of frosting to each of my small cupcakes so let's get these guys all frosted up and then i'll be back to show you our completed cupcakes and give you the smart points <laughs> Here are our frosted cupcakes. I cannot tell you how delicious these are. I tried a mini one, you guys. This tastes like a cupcake you pulled off the shelf at a boutique cupcake store. So incredibly delicious. So first let's talk about our little mini cupcakes that we made kind of on the fly with the extra batter. So you can have a mini cupcake with frosting for one smart point. Isn't that crazy? One smart point. And then our full size cupcakes here with frosting are four smart points. So you can have an entire cupcake with frosting for four points. And I thought, how fun would it be to even add 
a few sprinkles. And sprinkles, how fun. So again, four smart points for the full size cupcakes with frosting, one smart point for our mini cupcakes with frosting. So excited. You guys, you don't have to give up your favorite things on WW. So here are my snacks for the week. I'm changing it up a little bit because I found a few new favorites. So per the usual, I'm going to be having a built bar. You know, I love having one of these as my morning snack. Not only does it satisfy that mid morning sweet craving, it also keeps me full and satisfied and they are so delicious. So for this week, I'm bringing the cinnamon bear or the cinnamon chocolate cream, the brand spanking new flavor. Yes, you guys read that right. It's peanut butter. This one is outstanding. It is four smart points where all of the rest of the bill bars are three, but it is well worth it because there is 20 grams of protein and seven grams of fiber and legit little chunks of peanuts. So so good you guys i'm telling you this is an absolute must order so go on over to built bar it is there and available to order right now so good i'm also bringing a mocha chocolate cream if you like coffee and chocolate delicious double chocolate mousse i really like this one this is for you chocolate lovers out there and lastly the black cherry chocolate which is another one that i absolutely love so if you're interested in built bar remember all of these flavors are three points the only one that's four is the peanut butter. You can use my code here on the screen. It'll give you 10% off and free shipping. You can't beat it. Seriously, you guys, these are a game changer. These are a must have on Weight Watchers. I don't, I really don't think that I could do this journey without them. And they, I mean, they really are that delicious and that satisfying. So morning snack is a built bar. I've been really liking string cheese lately. I don't know what it is, but I really do like the Trader Joe's light string cheese. These are one smart point. And then I picked up from Target, you saw in my last What I Eat video, the little mini snack packs. These are such a great way to watch your portion control, but still have your favorite snacks. So I have the Utz mini cheese balls. These are so good, you guys. These are those greasy, cheesy deliciousness. And then I also have the Utz Bats and Jacks pretzels. These are really good. They're so buttery. They're one of the best pretzels I've ever had. And these little packages are one smart point. So you can't beat it. Portion control, one point. I usually have one of these and something with some protein like a string cheese for a two smart point snack. I've also been loving the Trader Joe's chocolate chip cocoa meringues. You guys, look at the size of these. And these meringues, so you can have three meringues for 90 calories and it actually ends up being five smart points just due to the sugar you can knock down the amount and you can have two for three points and then i usually just have one because literally look how big they are for two points so it's a great two point snack they actually have chocolate chips in them and they are so good so good so this is what i'm going to be bringing for snacks for the week thank you for joining me on this week's meal prep i hope you enjoyed seeing my breakfast lunch and those cupcakes i am so excited for that pumpkin cheesecake deliciousness for breakfast that lunch hello sausage pasta and cheese yes please. And cupcakes, you can't go wrong with frosted cupcakes. So I hope you enjoyed this week's meal prep. If you're new, welcome. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell. That way you're notified every time I upload a new video. You don't want to miss out. Make sure you thumbs up this one and comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite recipe of the three and what recipe or recipes do you have to try. And I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.